Latex gloves and comfy mattresses might seem like modern inventions, but they've actually been around for over 3,500 years. Ancient civilizations used a milky sap from trees to make them. Nowadays, latex is super common. More than 12 million tons of natural rubber is made each year. But how does this resap turn into all these cool things? Let's break down the science. Inside latex, there's a party going on. Tiny polymer particles are floating in water. These particles are crucial for making rubber. But where do they come from? Well, our journey starts way back in the 11th century in Central and South America. People there were using rubber, a close cousin of latex, to coat fabric and make balls for games. It all starts with special seeds from a tree called the rubber tree. This tree produces a milky liquid called natural latex. The trees are carefully nurtured in a nursery for about a year and a half before being grafted with buds from better trees. Then they join other hopeful trees on a plantation where they're looked after for six to seven years. But what about synthetic rubber? This is a man-made version cooked up in a lab. It's made from two main ingredients, styrene and butadiene, both of which come from petroleum, just like natural latex. Synthetic rubber can be customized. Scientists can create types that resist chemicals and high temperatures. When the rubber trees are fully grown, it's time to harvest. But instead of picking fruit, skilled workers called tappers use a special knife to carefully shave the bark, releasing the white liquid. It's a delicate balance. Cut too deep and the tree gets hurt. Cut too shallow, and we miss out on valuable latex. The latex travels down a special channel cut into the tree and is collected for processing. Once the latex flows down the channel to a spout at the bottom, it's collected in a waiting cup. But this isn't a one-time thing. Every other day, the tapper comes back with their special knife. This time, they make a thin shaving below the previous cut, creating a pattern on the tree. When the trees reach a certain height, they switch sides, tapping the other side to let the first side heal. Tapping is slow work. Each session takes about three hours and yields less than a cup of latex. Latex starts to solidify quickly, so to keep it flowing freely, tappers add a special ingredient like ammonia to the cup. Then, both the liquid and the collected lumps are taken to factories for processing. At the factory, the latex begins its journey to becoming useful products. First, it undergoes several processing steps to remove impurities and prepare it for further treatment. It's strained to remove large particles, and sometimes it's spun at high speed to separate heavier rubber particles from watery serum. Next, antioxidants and other additives are mixed in to improve the latex's properties and shelf life. These additives can prevent degradation and make the latex more durable for its final use. And there you have it, latex ready to be transformed into all sorts of useful products. Once the latex is ready to go, it's still a bit like sticky milk. Back in the 1800s, Charles Goodyear discovered a process called vulcanization. Rubber was great, but it had a big problem. It got too gooey when it was hot and too stiff and brittle when it was cold. Not exactly reliable. Vulcanization changed the game. It involved heating rubber with sulfur making it much more elastic and resistant to both hot and cold temperatures. This process forms chemical bonds within the latex, making rubber dependable in all sorts of weather. But sometimes, we need even stronger rubber. That's when we extract concentrated rubber. Specific methods are used to separate valuable rubber particles from the remaining water. Machines spin the mixture to fling out water, leaving behind concentrated rubber or a special chemical is added to make the rubber particles puff up and flow to the top, where they're skimmed off. Now, the latex is ready to take shape. It's poured into different molds depending on its use. Car tire molds are huge, while molds for tiny rubber bands need to be super precise. Whether it's gloves, balloons, or mattresses, latex can be molded to fit anything. High pressure is applied to ensure every nook and cranny of the mold is filled perfectly. Depending on the product, heat or special chemicals might be used to solidify the latex and set it in its final form. So where do we use all this rubber, both natural and synthetic? The biggest fan of rubber is the tire industry. Using a massive 60 to 70% of all rubber produced for those trusty tires that keep your car rolling. But rubber's reach goes way beyond wheels. Think about your comfy shoes, 
the conveyor belts in factories, or even the fan belt in your car that keeps things cool. They're all packed with rubber. Rubber is also essential for hoses, flooring, cables, and more. It's everywhere. And don't forget those handy latex gloves. Remember those latex gloves we talked about earlier? Well, they're actually made directly from natural rubber latex. Before these final products hit the shelves, they have to pass rigorous quality checks to ensure they meet industry standards. This includes testing for strength, flexibility, and resistance to wear and tear. The latex products need to be perfect and perform at their best, or there might be some major consequences. Once quality assurance is complete, it's time to package up the freshly made latex goods. Whether it's a box of gloves or a bag of balloons, each item is carefully packed to protect it during transit and storage. These products fill your local stores and are transported to factories, homes, and offices. It's amazing to think about the journey these products have taken from humble latex sap to finished goods ready for use. But with the growing population and usage, the world needs more products than natural rubber trees can handle. Today, most rubber is synthetic, but both natural and synthetic rubber industries are innovating. In 2022, the synthetic rubber market was valued at $23 billion US, and with new technology on the horizon, it's only bound to increase. Scientists are creating improved natural rubber varieties. While synthetic rubber is becoming cheaper, the journey of how latex is made. Who knew that a rubber duck could have so much effort put into it? If you enjoyed learning about this process, keep your eyes peeled for the next one on our channel. Thanks for watching.